Hello, it's my Eurovision 2024 national final season update number seven. Welcome to Matt Loves Eurovision. Please do click on the subscribe button, ring that notification bell and like, share and comment below. So this is going to be the last of the national final season update videos um, because while we don't have quite have all the songs yet, we have reached the end of the kind of the actual national final shows where the um, where they're actually selected in Ember from the public and etc. Uh, there are still two to be, as of the time I'm recording this, still two to be released that are internal selections, but I will mention those a little bit later. Before we get into those though, just to recap on the two remaining national final shows that took place last weekend. That was of course Sweden, who the hosts this year. Uh, they held uh, Melfest, uh, Melody Festival and they're uh, very, uh, very well known, very big uh, national um, sort of national selection show that runs for several weeks. Uh, they had their big national final in a huge, uh, the huge arena, uh, the Friends Arena, um, and many people that follow uh, Eurovision did actually attend uh, attend that and had all had a good time. The result was not a surprise, I have to say. There were the Marcus and Martinez, uh, Ma Marcus and Martinez, uh, who are uh, twins from Norway. Um, they were the huge, they were the big, big favourites uh, to win with their song Unforgettable. And ju they duly did one. They uh, did by a landslide. They won both. Uh, they won both the jury and the televote and the public vote very, very comfortably. In fact, as comfortably as Lorraine did last year with Tattoo. Um, the other national final, which is always one of my favourites, I think it's a very nice way to end national final season, was in Portugal and the Festival de Cansal. And again, like in Sweden, though, the big pre-show favourite won fairly comfortably, and that was Yolanda with her song Grito. Um, she won the jury and came second with the public vote, and so uh, won quite comfortably there. Uh, in terms of national selections, so previous to uh, to the two national final shows at the weekend, uh, we had two uh, internal selections were released. Uh, the first of those being Australia, and so the artist representing Australia will be Electric Fields, and they have a song called One Mikali, or One Brackets, One Blood. Um, they were the runners-up in Australia's national selection in 2019, where they came second uh, to Kate Miller-Heidke. Um, uh, with their song uh, 2000 and whatever, but uh, much like um, uh, last year, the uh, second place uh, from one of the previous Australian national final shows now has a chance to go to Eurovision or will be at Eurovision. Um, we also had Greece releasing their song, so we knew the artist was Marina Sati. Uh, her song, the Zari, uh, the music video was released uh, last week as well. Uh, we've also had, uh, after much toing and froing and, and an awful lot of controversy, understandably, uh, in the fandom, um, Israel's uh, song Edda by Eden Galan with Hurricane has been released. That was uh, released over the weekend. Um, there had been, I think there had been a couple of twos and throws with the EBU around the content of the lyrics of the song being too considered too political, which again goes against the EBU's regulations. It was a, uh, it was what happened to Belarus in 2021, but they did not change their lyrics or they, when they came back with them, that it was still uh, was was ruled out. Uh, the EBU have cleared Israel's song uh, to go to the contest. So at the time of recording, Israel will be at the contest. I know there's a lot of strong feelings about that. Uh, I'm not going to cover them that in this particular video. <laughs> I'm sure you can see it's reaching the national press, uh, national media as well. So there are various articles you can read about that. And then we've had Georgia, the first of the three Caucasus countries to actually release the song, internally selected. Uh, we knew the artist uh, from quite a while ago, Nutsa uh, Buza Ladze. Uh, she actually met Oli Alexander when he went to Georgia to film his music video. Uh, and they had uh, they met and uh, did a couple of TikToks together. Um, well, her song Firefighter has now been uh, released as well, um, which means we we're only left with uh, two remaining songs to go, um, which are from the two other Caucasus countries, Armenia and Azerbaijan. Now we hadn't known who the artists were for these, let alone kind of the song or when they'll be released, but we do at least now know the artists for both of those. Azerbaijan will be an artist called Fari, so it's a male solo, and for Armenia it's actually a French-based um, Armenian geo called uh, La Deniva, not La Deniva, <laughs> the old car, but La Deniva, um, which is a duet, uh, and they both will be releasing their songs, well, 
But their songs are already submitted to the EBU. Uh, I'm not sure when we'll get those, probably um, the next few days, I would imagine, or the next couple of weeks. Um, but we've also got some revamps or tweaks of, of previously released songs coming. So Albania, Beza has already released uh, her, and it is a revamp of her song, it's now in English, it's titled Titan, and that is, it's all in English rather than being in Albanian as it was previously. That's now been released, and we're awaiting some, I think, I'm not sure how whether they're tweaks or big revamps uh, from Icove, Czechia, Tali in Luxembourg, uh, Sarah Bonici in Malta, and possibly even Raven uh, for Slovenia. All of those, I think, will be undergoing at least some changes, but again, we will see the kind of finished product uh, fairly soon. Um, now, as as I mentioned, the March eleventh deadline has passed, which is the uh, when when you know when the delegations get together and we get a sign off of kind of all the submissions. That's the point where everything is sealed, uh, and that uh, it was also confirmed that Iceland with uh, Hera Björk will be um, will be uh, taking part. There was uh, that had not been confirmed at the time because um, there was some there has been quite a lot of discussion in Iceland about whether or not they were going to go to Eurovision this year, um, given um, given Israel's participation. However, they have decided to go. And so we have got 37 countries participating at the time of recording. Um, uh, in kind of following that big, the, the uh, meeting of the um, the reference group on, on, on March the 11th, we've also had some information about some changes that were taking place for this year's Eurovision. Normally you get some changes and tweaks every year. Um, Sweden tend to be the ones, tend to be the country that make the biggest changes uh, to how things are done uh, historically. Um, and they've done that to an extent this year. They have, uh, they are changing the way that the voting happens for, um, or the voting window happens for the grand final. So people will be able to vote, the public will be able to vote for their so for songs from the start of the performances so for I think shortly before I think about a minute or 10 seconds before the first song begins people will be able to start to vote that is not completely new innovation that was the case in 2010 and 2011 um it um uh, it, it sometimes gives a I'm not sure that it'll be a make a huge amount of difference but we'll come on to that in a moment because uh, um the rest of the world vote which is a fairly a new thing that was, was the first time I think possibly last year or the year before, I can't remember, it's been one or two years that we've had the rest of the world vote. Um, that will be open from the end of the second semi-final, so they will have longer to vote. So by the, as soon as you've hit the end of the second semi-final, you know who the finalist is going to be. The rest of the world public vote will be open from that point. For everyone else, it will be from the start of the grand final, from the start of the performances in the grand final. Um, semi-final voting remains as it is uh, it's all uh, as it was last year it's all televote um, and but it'll only be open after all the songs have performed so you can't vote from the start of it and I think the idea of it is that you uh, people will know the so you know um, it gives it uh, people can't vote from the start of the semi-finals because they won't necessarily have heard songs yet whereas by the time of the final they will have and that's another reason another change is happening because the big five and the host country will perform live in the two semi-finals not just uh, a one minute snippet or a little interview that we've had of previous years um, where you've had a snippet of the rehearsal of what the big five plus host this time they will do a full live performance integrated into the semi-final performances so not as an interval lap but actually in the running order obviously though people obviously vote for those um and i think that is the reason that's happened is obviously is to enable the kind of all show or the all performance voting in the um in the grand final because at least everyone will have at least had a chance to see the full three minutes of the Big Five and host, and they will be up on YouTube and various other social media as well. Now, why has this all been done? I think from a from the televote on the in the grand final side of things, um, I think it maybe gives the first half songs a bit more chance. Um, I don't think... I, I think there's a difference between... Does it make it more likely that they will win? It's like, actually there's a lot of the winners, recent winners, have come from the first half. That's not been the issue. Literally, they've come from later, sort of from song nine onwards in in the latter in the in the first half. But it doesn't mean that you can't win from the first half. But I think particularly the songs in first, second, third, fourth do tend to struggle a little bit more when it comes to, to some of the voting. So maybe it just it's just to sort of 
equal that up a bit. I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference. I don't think it made a huge amount of difference in 2010 and 2011. In actually, those years we had, um, uh, the winners came from the second half in those particular years. So, yeah, so I just think it probably just evens out a little bit of the of the um, bias towards, certainly towards the end, um, just in terms of just televote and some of that televote. As I, said, I don't think it's necessary would be enough to, to change a winner dramatically. Um, and I think the rest of the world one, which obviously starts from the end of the semi, the end of the second semi final, um, I think that maybe is partly time zone as well, because um, even if they were given the whole of the final, the national, the, the final uh, to vote, that's still not going to suit all time zones. Also, frankly, money. Um, <laughs> uh, I think they want to give more people the opportunity to vote. Um, uh, it'll still be the same weighting of votes, so it's, it's not going to. To, to skew things that way but it just gives more people a chance to vote more money obviously the things are getting more expensive we've had some members not are not taking part at the moment so i think every little helps on that side of things um and then we've also had the uh, traditionally the host or as last year the hosts um, draw their place in the running or all the other places are generally um the running order is divided is decided by the producers but to prevent any kind of bias that the the host country um will draw their um their country in well draw their running order place in the grand final that was done for sweden and sweden have ended up will be opening the show uh in as the host country so um which is quite of course everyone went oh well it's funny how this ch this rule change happened and then sweden suddenly enters they were completely coincidental because the um the drawing of the place of the um the drawing of the sort of running order is done, you know, separately, is done in front of lots of people. Uh, it's all done very fairly. And it just, just it was just a coincidence, really, that that's happened. I don't think uh, it, it it might, it may or may not help Sweden a bit in the televote, uh, ultimately. Um, but, yeah, I don't think it's, I, I suspect it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. And certainly uh, people can probably just sort of, you know, Calm themselves down a little bit, I think. That's a, 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 a period of cool reflection from everybody, I think, might be a, a good idea. And just step away from step away from keyboards for a bit, I think, because I think there's a lot of passions are flowing at the moment. Um, so that is my last of my national final season updates. Um, I, traditionally, I do my top... I, I, a, a countdown of just from my own... Uh, just a way of doing, like, a, a preview, a review of each song... Uh, of each entry just doing it through kind of my preference um not who i expect to do well who, who who i think is going to do best it's just my way of just way of organizing it from my perspective uh, i will be doing that again i will be doing all 37 songs and that will begin on i think because it, i i like to do the my number one on the sunday before eurovision working backwards i think that means 30th of march which is the Saturday of the Easter weekend will be my first, will be number 37, will be then. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll be doing any videos in the meantime. Uh, I think if there are any uh, major changes next, apparently there is another one more major change for this year's Eurovision to be announced. Um, if, if that comes along and that's worth talking about, I will probably do a video. Um, I'm, I'm going to be at, well, I'm going to be a couple of preview events. I'll be at uh, Eurofest and Vauxhall. Uh, the Vauxhall Tavern, we get to see Mimi Cat, which I'm very excited, she's one of my favourites from last year for Portugal, uh, and we get to do uh, Boom Bang A Bang, which is where we watch all 37 videos and, and do rankings, and, and the Boom Bang A Bang never get the, the winner right. I think we voted, I think uh, collectively, I think Austria came out as number one in the vote last year, <laughs> and of course that didn't, come out, didn't, win, didn't win last year, so, um, uh, so yeah, they never quite get it right. Um, and then I'm actually going to be at London Eurovision, uh, which is in the second uh, weekend of April. So that's after my th top 37 has begun. Uh, I might do a little bit, I may do a video to talk about my experience at London Eurovision. It's great to get to see some of the acts or lots of the acts live for the first time. Um, so if anything comes, anything comes up, I might do a quick video now. But for now, that's it from me. Uh, take care and I'll see you soon. <laughs>